Hello, ladies and gentlemen of YouTube. I am Clementine, and as always, I am Super Saiyan. But never mind that. I was looking at an Epiphone humbucker and seeing that one coil has flat poles like slugs and the other has screws. And this HSS Squire Strat, its humbucker has all flat poles. It's a dual slug coil humbucker. And as a guitar player now, I completely suddenly wonder what is the difference in sound between these two coils exactly. I want to hear them against each other. I could coil split them, but they're in different places on the string. They'll sound different anyway. So what I really need is a coil splittable humbucker with 12 screw poles then it would be a nice thing to have another one completely identical to it with 12 flat poles i could put that in a test mule guitar shoot them out against each other on a clean tube amp so in this video we're gonna rip apart a set of humbuckers do some screwing and some drilling and some smoking and some winding and some dipping and some bubbling since we remembered to wrap it all in tape we can do some screwing again and now we got two identical pickups, one with flat poles and one with screw poles. We can slap them in the test mule guitar, do an A-B sound test of the two pickups, both coal split and as humbuckers, with clean, boosted, and overdriven tones. And then to test the feel, we'll just ha kind of have to crank it up and get down on it. If this sounds like something you might be interested in, stay tuned! Roll that beautiful bean footage. The first thing that we need is some humbucker parts. I found that the most economical way to get cheap humbucker parts for doing experiments like this is to just buy cheap humbuckers and take them apart. You may notice one of these already has a coil removed and that's because this is a set of humbuckers that I've actually used for an experiment in the past. When we turned a humbucker into a single coil size P90. I'll stick a card in the corner if you'd like to pop over and see that. But this time we just need to keep taking all those little screws out of the back of the humbucker plates until all the coils are loose. The idea here was to take each one of these coils and clip them free from the back plate and one another so that we can solder uh, individual pickup leads to each one of these coils. You can use small pieces of heat shrink to prevent the solder joints from shorting out with one another and a large piece of heat shrink will cover the ground and also provide some strain relief to protect the leads. Once you take the screws out of the back of a humbucker and you open it up and look at the wires that go to the coils, it's pretty easy to see how you can clip the ground wire away from the back plate and clip the positive wire from in between the pickups and you'll retain one of the leads going into the windings of the screw coil pickup. Then you simply strip and connect the other two wires uh, just as I shown in the P90 conversion video. For the slug coils you just have to strip both the wires back and attach your own leads. But once you put the heat shrink on there all the coils look exactly the same. So, all these pickup leads will allow you to hook these coils up in phase or out of phase, series or parallel without grounding out and silencing the pickup. But the back plate's still gonna need a ground. So here I'm just drilling the solder joints out on the rivets of these back plates and then soldering to that an independent lead which can always be connected to ground. And now you may realize exactly what it was I was doing here it has more to do with it than this one video. This is basically like a humbucker test kit for all kinds of future experiments. You could hook these up in any configuration of wiring and in any configuration of coils with all kinds of different magnets, etc, etc. But due to the difference in width between neck and bridge pickup coils, we will have to enlarge one set of holes on each back plate with a drill. Then we just slide a magnet in there from the end, screw the damn thing together in viola. Do the exact same thing again to the other pickup and double viola. Aren't they beautiful and uh, everyone's happy and the sun shines even when it's raining for the rest of all time or maybe not. But you know, I'm too paranoid to let it ride like that. So I go to start testing these coils and they all test between four and five K except for the one with the yellow lead. It tests at zero point infinity. You know, but, but it's fine. But, no, it's not. This is a Singer sewing machine from the 60s that's been converted into a pickup winder. And cue the guy that turns to his buddy or his old lady and says like, I could have fixed that pickup without rewinding it. All you gotta do is just resolder them leads and maybe unwrap it like three times, find out where it's broken and resolder it. 
Yeah, homie, I'm right there with you. I did every bit of that, but she was still reading wide open. So to make her brand new, we take an X-Acto knife, rub it across the windings. Presto changeo, I rip them out of there. You have a naked bobbin and a big wad of nasty, greasy filling, waxy copper windings. Next, I removed all the screws from the bobbin to prepare it to be mounted. Next, I took some sandpaper and made sure to hit any rough edges of the bobbin, especially this one place that had chipped. Now we can mark the flywheel with a straight edge, drill the mounting holes, and install the pickup bobbin on the flywheel using two brass machine screws and a wooden spacer. And that's gonna work just perfect. So now we can take some 42 gauge poly magnet wire and place the roll on the ground under the pickup winder. And now to make a connection with the pickup lead, I have the magnet wire draped across the pickup bobbin and I'm spinning the positive pickup lead to wrap a good bit of this magnet wire around that bare section, as you can see better in this close-up. And this was done to ensure that I would get a good, hot, strong solder joint. All that polyurethane coating burns off inside of that uh, solder pool and it just goes up in smoke. Then we can use a little bit of pickup tape to cover up that solder joint so that it doesn't short out any of the winds over time as it breaks down. Then we can just place that uh, tape portion of the pickup lead down inside of the pickup bobbin. Use some electrical tape to tape the other end of that pickup lead to the flywheel so it won't be flying around in the air. Make sure it's packed down into the coil. Do a couple of the wraps by hand. I like to do about the first 30 to 50 wraps by hand just to really make sure that I've got that pickup lead secure down inside that coil and it's gonna be held down. Then I can step on this pedal, take off winding. And oh, this is not sped up at all. This thing is just way faster than a commercial pickup winder. Only thing you gotta do to make them this fast is beat them into submission. Well, anyway, I'm trying to act like a machine and get a constant to traverse of like a one to four. But I can't keep up with the speed of this machine, so I'm having to come back and scatter wind and fill in little holes. Then in less than two minutes, you can see that I have a pretty decent coil on on there I bet that's about 2.2 K 2.4 K something like that now I'm not using a wine counter I just take the coil look at it take this other coil compare the size of them now this other one's about 5.6 it's the high wine coil from the bridge coil on the winder is from the neck pickup and it needs to come out to about 4.5 4.6 judging by the thickness of the pickup tape I'd say this is about 2.2 2.4 K so onward um, it seems like people really like to watch pickup winding, but it's pretty much boring unless something wrong happens. So here you go, I got a couple of wines over the wood block. So I just took the pickup bobbin off, got it in my hand, got those wines back away from that wood and onto the pickup bobbin, and then did some hand winding, got it all back straightened up, screwed it all back down, onward again. Even if you get a wad of loose wines and you just crumple them up on the side of the coil and cover them up with other wines, it'll be fine. All it will do is give a little sparkle to that pickup. Luckily, this one turned out good, so I just need to break that wire, wrap it around a lead, solder and shrink wrap it, throw some pickup tape on the coil, connect a lead, and then send her in the wax bath. After the bubbles stop, we can rip it back out of there. We'll let it cool down a little bit and test it. See how close I got to my target? And now we just throw all this shit back together like it never happened. And now finally I could take a piece of a strap pick guard, snip out some bits, drill some holes, glue on a support bracket, rip the P180 humbucker out of the test and mule guitar. If you want to see a video of that, there's a card in the corner thusly, unless I have forgotten. I then screwed the thing down to the guitar and installed the pickup, did it all in a measurable, repeatable way. And I will actually measure the pickups every time I switch them out during this whole test here. And with this wiring configuration, I can easily switch it from a single coil to a humbucker without having to move or disturb anything. So, I think the graphics I made are pretty self-explanatory. It uh, signifies a screw or flat pole in single or humbucking configuration. The pedals are Klon and Tube Screamer clones. Amps a stock stage right selection 7080. And I'm gonna try my best to uh, edit this in some kind of coherent way.
So it all pretty much sounds exactly the same. Yes, it does. I think that's exactly why I stopped editing this video about uh, in April. I guess sometimes experiments are gonna have a, be like a null result. Glenn Fricker would be like, no shit, kid. But somebody's going in the doobly doob down below right now to be like, no, 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 no. Glenn Fricker has like a, a 412 Marshall with a Sure 57 on it running into a snake to a real studio. Yeah, yeah they still pretty much sound exactly the same. And if you remember, any time it was humbucking, it was using a hand-wound coil versus factory machine-wound coil, and it didn't sound any different. Not really. About 10%. I personally think the slug sounds better. It definitely feels better for leads and stuff. Well, guys, that just about don't do it for this video. First off, happy new year. We all made it, we're still here. I hope this video really did make somebody happy out there. So, what's up with all this stuff? And where have I been? Have I been selling used cars or drinking hairspray, living under a bridge? No, this all starts last summer. Apparently around the time that I was uh, building that garage, something happened. I didn't even know anything had happened. But this led to the most crazy and eventful year of my entire life. So it started off all wacky fight, just freezing. Power outages, busted all the pipes, the shit, all that. And that's about the exact time that my YouTube starts to just blow up out the water. So I just jump in there and I start putting the hell out of videos. Boom, boom, boom. I even finally got the Oak Mythbuster guitar all put together and play the hell out of it for the first time. So what gives? You shit's just blowing up and you just quit? Well, to explain, let's take a look at this uh, picture from about 20 years ago of me and my best friend from school. Her name's Heather, and we still been hanging out every day since then. Here's a picture of our new best friend, Dizzy. Well, we've been hanging out with her since April. She was born with a head full of hair, smiling, looking around everywhere. But unfortunately, she soon got very, very sick. After about a month in the heart center, hooked up like a synthesizer, another month of uh, shots and medicine, then on May 31st, like magic, you could just tell by looking at her, she was completely fixed. And she just goes to doing all the things. The song's starting. You better play. <laughs> so what about the channel? Am I done? Well, hell no. I've been doing stuff too. to decide if this is Next year.